this video, we'll talk about section 6.2, anti-differentiation by substitution. So our definition, the family of all antiderivatives of f of x is the indefinite integral of f with respect to x, which we denote with this integral sign and no limits of f of x dx. If capital F of x is any function such that capital F prime is equal to little f, then the integral of f of x dx is capital F of x plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant called the constant of integration. So let's remember some of these integrals from our past. The integral of 5 to the x dx is 5 to the x over the natural log of 5 plus c. The integral of 1 over x dx is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Now, to set the stage for integrating by substitution, let's take a look and make sure we understand the difference between the integral of f of x dx, the integral of f of u du, and the integral of f of u dx. If we say, for example, that f of x is x cubed plus 1, and du, or u rather, is x squared. So if u is x squared, then du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x, is 2x, which means that du is 2x dx. So the first integral of f of x dx is pretty straightforward. That's just going to be the integral of x cubed plus 1, which is going to be 1 fourth x to the fourth plus x plus our constant of integration. The second one, f of u, means we're going to plug in x squared. So f of u is going to be x squared going in to the x cubed plus 1 function. So that's going to be x to the 6th plus 1. And then we're going, to differ, we're going to multiply that by the du, which is another 2x dx. So we could call that then 2x to the 7th plus 2x if we want to integrate with respect to x. And so that would be, we'll get x to the 8th and then a 1 eighth times 2 would be 1 fourth. And then we would get an x squared plus c. So that's one way to do it. We could also just think of it as, I'm going to try to insert in here. We could have called that f of u could be u, cubed, what do I want, u cubed plus 1 du would be 1 fourth u to the fourth plus u plus c, and then substitute back in the x squared for the u and get one fourth x squared to the fourth plus our x squared plus c, and that's another way to get to that same thing that we got earlier using all of the x's. So those are equivalent, and that's really where we're headed with our integration by substitution. And the third one, the f of u with dx, so notice that uh, we're just using a dx instead of u. Then we're going to get our uh, f of u is again going to be that x to the 6th plus 1, but this time we just have the dx. So we'll get 1 7th x to the 7th plus x plus c. So you can see we get different results depending on what that notation is. So uh, it matters. So we can't do, the, the whole point is we can't do our substitution and leave the differential dx. We must change that to a u differential as well. So let's see some examples here on our next panel. So... Uh, and as we have said, it's not enough to just change that inside substitution and to, to make it a u, you have to change the differential as well.
So here's our first one. Again, if you remember, we're going to say u is going to be that inside function, cosine x. That means du is going to be a negative sine x dx, or if you like, the dx is going to be a du over negative sine of x. So then our substitution is going to become the integral of, we've got sine x, it becomes e to the u. The dx we replace by the du over negative sine x. That allows us to cancel those sine x's, and we get the negative integral of e to the u du, which is going to be a negative integral of e to the u plus a constant. And then we can go back to substituting in the cosine x. So we get negative e to the cosine of x plus c is going to be our final answer. Similarly, in the green function, u is the inside function, the 5 plus 2x cubed. The du is going to be 6x squared dx, making the dx equal to du over 6x squared. So our substitution, we'll get to that x squared in a minute, and maybe making that a more derivative-friendly um, representation of the square root, we can call that u to the 1 half, and the dx is going to get replaced by du over 6x squared. So we can see that the extra powers of x are accounted for. The extra constant we can pull outside of our integral, and we get the integral of u to the 1 half is going to be u to the 3 halves. We'll multiply that by 2 thirds and put in the plus c. We can cancel those, and we're going to end up with a 1 ninth. And the u we said was 5 plus 2x to the third, all raised to the 3 halves plus our constant of integration, c. On the blue one, if you remember the integral of cosine, if you don't, I'll give you a quick uh, refresher. So let's just forget the 7x for a moment. And the way we remember the integral of cosine uh, over sine is u is going to be the denominator. That makes du the cosine of x and dx the du over the cosine. So our integral becomes cosine over u, and the du, the dx rather, the du over cosine x accounts for that extra cosine, and we get an integral of 1 over u du, which we know is a natural log of u plus c, which gives us the natural log of the absolute value of sine x plus c, or sometimes you'll see it written as the negative natural log of cosecant of x plus c. Either way is okay. At any rate, we're going to say u is going to be the 7x, du will be 7, making dx du over 7, changing our integral into the cotangent of u, and we get an extra 7 or one-seventh, actually, and hopefully recognizing and memorizing or rememorizing the integral of cotangent is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of the sine of u, which is 7x, plus c, the constant of integration. I'm going to move this up a little bit, hopefully. Okay, so the next one, we can recognize that 1 over cosine squared is also known as secant squared of 2x. Now that makes it easier. We can just worry about the 2x. Say u is 2x, so du is 2dx, so dx is du over 2, so it becomes the integral of secant squared u du over 2, which is going to become one-half integral of secant squared u du, 
which is going to be the tangent of u, which we said was 2x, plus our constant of integration. Now, cotangent squared, it's been a little while. That one, we're going to need a, a, a trig identity. So I'm going to go back to the source of all of our trig identities. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Since cotangent squared has sine squared in the denominator, I'll divide through our favorite identity by sine squared, creating an identity that is going to involve our cotangent squared. And we'll see that cotangent squared is going to be cosecant squared minus 1. So that's going to make our integral be cosecant squared of 3x minus 1 dx. So I'm going to split that into two integrals, one of which is going to need a u substitution, the cosecant squared of 3x, and the other one won't, the dx. So I'm going to say that u is 3x, du will be 3dx, so dx will be du over 3. So our integral is going to become cosecant squared of u, du with an extra one-third in it, but then just minus the integral of dx on the other one. So if you remember, cosecant squared is going to be a negative cotangent. So we're going to get negative one-third cotangent of u, which we said was 3x, minus the x plus c, because that was just an integral of 1 with respect to x. All right. The next one, now we got to remember, this has been a while, our... our um, formula is going to be the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx is going to be, if you recall, an arctangent of x. So we want to make this a 1 where we see the 4. So we're going to factor that 4 out, making that x squared over 4 plus 1. Still got a dx. We can pull that one-fourth all the way outside, but now we're going to have to make a u substitution because we want that to be a u squared right there. So the u is going to be the x over 2, making du one-half dx, making the dx 2 du. So we've got our one-fourth that we pulled outside the integral. We're going to, uh, whoops, that was still a dx at this point in time. So we're going to replace our dx by a 2 du, and we've now got u squared plus 1. That 2 can come outside and make that a 1 half, and we're going to now get the arctangent of u plus c. And finally, going back to what our u was, that x over 2 plus c. And there is our indefinite integral. All right, let's move this up if we can and see what we can do here. Okay, so this is going to become, if you remember, the integral of du over the square root of 1 minus u squared is going to be our arc sine of u. So it's been a little while, but we want to make this be a 1. So we can, if you want, pull that 3 outside. We can, inside the radical, factor out the 9, making that a 1 minus, that's going to become 4 ninths x squared. And we still have a dx at this point in time. The 9 in the radical comes outside as a uh, square root of 9 is 3. That's in the denominator, which will then cancel that 3. So now we've got the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus 4 ninths x squared dx. 
Now we're about ready for a u substitution. We're going to think of that as u squared, which is going to make u 2 thirds x. And that in turn will make du 2 thirds dx, which will make dx 3 halves du. So we get the integral of, that's now going to be 3 halves du over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So the 3 halves can come all the way outside. We can then do the integral we want, the integral of 1, 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared, which is going to be an arc sine of u. And so at the end, we're going to get 3 halves arc sine of u, we said, was 2 thirds x plus c. All right, see if we can remember. Now it's been a while, so let's forget the pi over 6x for a minute. The integral of secant of u to u, this is that crazy natural log of the secant of u plus the tangent of u plus c. So our substitution is kind of a minor one. u is pi over 6x, du will be pi over 6dx, so the dx will be 6 over pi du. So make, that makes our integral the secant of u, and then we get this du with an extra 6 over pi. So we get 6 over pi times the natural log of the absolute value of the secant of u, that's the pi over 6x, plus the tangent of u, which is another pi over 6x, and then after all that, we don't want to forget the plus c. There we have it. Okay, similarly, we know that, like we saw with the derivative of the cotangent, the inter or integral, rather, of the cotangent, the integral of tangent, we can see is going to be the integral of a sine x over cosine x. If you remember, that makes the u into cosine, the du into a negative sign, and the dx will be the du over the negative sign. So that's going to become the integral of, and we'll call that then the sine of, uh, what do I want to do? Well, let's hold on. So we'll make, yeah, the integral, we'll just do it with x first. Integral of sine x over cosine of, uh, we'll call that u, over u, and the dx will be our du over negative sine x. So we cancel those, but we get an extra negative sign. And so we get the negative natural log of the absolute value of the denominator, cosine of x plus c, or sometimes because of that negative, that's a neg natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus c. Either one's okay. All right. With our tangent, then, we'll just make u into pi over 2x. Let me change colors there. Let's make uh, u into pi over 2x du will be pi over 2dx, so dx will be du times 2 over pi. So we get the integral of the tangent of u and a du with an extra 2 over pi. So that'll be 2 over pi, I'll go negative 2 over pi, natural log, absolute value of the cosine of u, which we've called pi over 2x plus c. All right. Now, the next one is a little bit roundabout here. This is kind of tricky. So we had a cosine to the third. So we are going to use a trig identity coming from the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So we can take two of those cosines, that cosine squared, and replace it with a 1 minus sine squared. So that's going to become the integral of one of those cosines times 1 minus 
sine squared x dx. You with me there? We'll distribute the cosine and separate these into separate integrals. There's the integral of cosine x dx minus the integral of cosine x times sine squared x dx. So the first integral is really straightforward. That's just going to be sine x. The next one needs a u substitution. So we'll say u is the sine x, du is the cosine of x, and that makes dx du over cosine x, and makes this integral into cosine x times, and that's going to be a u squared, but our du, or our dx rather, is going to account for that extra cosine x. And so we end up integrating u squared, which is going to be a minus one-third u cubed. And then we can go back and bring in our sine x. That's going to be minus one-third. And the u was the sine of x. And we've got our constant of integration. There we have it. All right, let's look at the next one. Now we want to do uh, substitution with definite integrals. So when we bring in the limits, there's two choices. We can do our u substitution, um, don't write the limits, do the integral, and then bring the x's back. So uh, I'll show you this, or we can change the limits. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. Because this first one, there's actually two different u substitutions you can make. So the first one, I'm going to say u is tangent x, and the du is going to be secant squared x dx. So the dx is going to be du over secant squared x. And so on this one, I'm not going to change the limits, but then I can't write those limits down because they don't go with the u's. So I'm going to call the tangent x u, the secant squared x, I'm going to replace the dx by du over secant squared x, and that's going to account for those. And so the integral we're going to do is just the integral of u du, which is going to be 1 half u squared plus c. And then I'm going to come back to uh, what the u was, that is the tangent squared of x. And I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 3. So after we've uh, finished all the integration stuff and brought the x's back, then we bring back our x limits. Be careful, because you don't want to write the, those x limits in here, because those are not correct with that u. And on an AP test, they might ding you for that. So if you just leave it off altogether, we'll just leave it as if we haven't resolved that issue until we come back to here, and then we're going to resolve it. So we're going to get 1 half tangent squared of pi over 3 minus 1 half tangent squared of the 0. So tangent squared of pi over 3 is going to be sine pi over 3 over cosine pi over 3 squared times the 1 half. So sine pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine pi over 3 is a half. And when we cancel those halves and square the square root of 3, we're going to get just 3 halves. And the tangent of 0 is 0, and so that is going to be our answer. Now let's do the same one, but I'm going to change the limits. This is what we really want to be able to do. So this time, though, I'm going to choose u to be secant x. I'll do a completely different u substitution as well. So the du, the derivative of secant, is secant x tangent x dx. So the dx is going to be du over secant x tangent x. So our integral is now going to become, well, we've got the tangent that's hanging out there for a moment. The, I'm going to just call secant squared. I'm just going to use one of the secants as a u. And then we still have that other secant x that we're going to count for as part of our dx, which is du over secant x tangent x. So these will cancel, and our integral is going to be the integral of u du. Oh, and let's change our limits, sorry. 
let's make our limits. We're going to take u of pi over 3 is going to be this limit. Whoops. And u of 0 is going to be this limit. So here's our u here, the secant. So u of pi over 3 is 1 over the cosine of pi over 3. And cosine of pi over 3, we said, was the just uh, 1 half. So that's just going to be a 2. That's going to be the upper limit. And the u of 0 is going to be 1 over cosine of 0. But that's just 1. So our limits become from 1 to 2. So we can then do our integral. The integral of u is 1 half u squared. And now we won't go back to the x's at all. We'll just use our u limits. And that will become 1 half times 2 squared minus 1 half times 1 squared. So that's going to be 4 halves minus the 1 half gets us to that same 3 halves that we got the other way. Okay, let's do the next one. And let's change the limits to u limits. I think that's the trickier thing to do, but we can use our practice. We can get the practice on it. So we're going to say u is going to be, oh, what shall we, let's call it the whole x squared minus 4. And the du is going to be 2x dx. And so the dx is going to be du over 2x. So our integral, we're going to have u of 0 as one of those limits and u of 1 as the other. At the x, the whole denominator becomes u, and the dx has an extra 2x in it. That's going to take care of that extra x. We'll pull the 1 half through, and now let's see what our limits are. u of 0 means we're going to plug in 0 for x, and that's going to make that be a negative 4. And u of 1 is going to be... 1 squared minus 4 is a negative 3. And our integral is the 1 over u du. And we know that is going to be a natural logarithm of the absolute value of u, which we're going to evaluate from negative 4 to negative 3. So we will get 1 half natural log of the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, minus 1 half natural log of the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. We can, using a little bit of algebra, factor out that 1 half. And if we then use properties of logarithms, we can call that the natural log of 3 fourths. And if we want to, we could stop there, that would be great. Or if we really want to impress people, we can call that the natural log of 3 fourths to the 1 half, or the natural log of the square root of 3 fourths. How much can we do? Square to top over square to bottom. That's pretty slick right there. Okay, very good.